Hey y'all, in for H and H here. So this is going to be an introductory video to a new series. Um, I'm going to shoot a few videos about something I've never uh, shot a video about. Surprise, surprise! Let me pan down. What is that? Well, FTDX 101 MP. Thank you to KC4WZB, my good friend Joel for loaning this radio to me for this series. Uh, can you imagine somebody doing that? Joel is, is just that kind of a person. Um, well, he's responsible for me being able to bring you the FTDX 10 videos as well. So um, I just unboxed it, got it set up. Uh, let me show you, I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit here and show you the setup. So the Elecraft amplifier has been moved over there to that table and its power supply is on the second level down and my AL80B is on the bottom, just over here. There's the power supply and left speaker for the FTDX101MP. And then I've got the radio and the other speaker here uh, in front of me. So there we go. I'll be shooting a series of videos with this thing. I did just work that station. That's a POTA station, uh, Whiskey Zulu 9 Bravo. And I just worked him with this radio, oh, just uh, a few minutes ago, um, at 420 watts out of the Elecraft. And, uh, well, I'll uh, be coming to you with some more videos about this rig as time goes on. We'll get into some setup, um, some operational techniques. Now, okay, if you've got an FTDX-10, you've learned a lot of those operational techniques because they carry over this radio and vice versa. I'll turn that down a little bit. So the difference is the menu. It just looks a little different, okay? The layout here of this menu is different than the FTDX-10. Now, I will tell you that already I have noticed some things that I'm more comfortable with on the FTDX-10. Now, let's be fair. It may be that the more I use the 101, I might be comfortable with it on the 101, but so far there are uh, some things that I'm more comfortable with on the 10, uh, but of course the 101 has uh, more things available via buttons and, and knobs, and quite honestly I'm so accustomed to where they are in the, one oh, or in the uh, FTDX 10 that that's throwing me a little bit, but you know I'll get to know it, uh, and yes you'll notice that the 5000's not here. I, I couldn't fit them all up here. So I've got the 5,000 put away for now. Um, I'll miss my old buddy. <laughs> but um, what I will be doing in this series, I'll also, because I've had people request this, I'll do some comparisons between the FTDX-10 and the FTDX-101. And I'm just going to tell you, they're going to be neck to neck. I, I, I'm, I'm almost certain of that because the FTDX-10 and the FTDX-5000 have been neck to neck, you know, just just about every time I do a comparison. So um, the 101, when I first tried one out in 2019, I actually chose the 5000 over this radio here because earlier firmware for this radio is just not quite matured yet. And uh, there were things, especially digital noise reduction on the 5000 that was actually better than uh, this radio here. Now this radio has built-in pre-selector called VC Tune. The 5000 has one called VRF, which was not as effective as VC Tune. However, you've seen my videos about the mu-tuning pre-selectors, which are outboard devices that plug into the 5000 to um, you know, put that pre-selector on steroids, as it were. Uh, the VC Tune that is uh, built into this radio is supposed to be superior to those mu-tuners. Well, um, when I was evaluating the radios, I didn't find that to be the case. I thought they were neck to neck, but okay, I'll do some more exploration of that and we'll see. Uh, so just stay tuned for this series. Uh, again, this is the Yesu FTDX 101 MP and I uh, hope to catch you in the next video. Just keep an eye, you know, subscribe to the channel and, uh, and watch out for uh, videos about this radio. Now, these videos will go to the Patreon support team first and then eventually we'll end up out here in the public domain. Uh, they get early viewings, usually a month or two or three uh, in advance. So if you want to 
uh, see these videos as soon as they come out, then you'll want to join the Patreon support team. You can learn how to do that at the end of this video. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Those long haulers are what you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. I appreciate any any level you can help, though. Uh, there are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. Uh, you can vote. As they say, vote with your wallet to help uh, offset the cost of doing this. To uh, join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's P A T. R E O N dot com forward slash N four H and H. And if you would give the video a thumbs up, a like, that helps us out with YouTube search algorithm and costs you nothing. And you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week occasionally a third. And also, finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks again for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.